Hello everyone. We are going to talk about a game called Other Side. I will focus on one of the selectable characters, the Soul Slinger. Sometimes I call her the Gunslinger or the Gunfighter. Now, as you level up the Gunslinger, you get to pick different skills. At level two, there are two skills to select from. One is Shadow Round, the other is Wrathful Rain. Which skill do I think is better? And which skill to use in what situation? If you're interested in the details, I will discuss about these skills later. And I will also talk about some interesting aspects of each skill. But if you just want the short answer, which one do I prefer? Well, this is my personal preference. It's Shadow Rounds. Why? Because it is useful in many situations. It's useful in the early game. It's useful towards the end of the game. It is effective in different missions. It is also very helpful against bosses. You can dish out very high damage and the damage stacks very quickly as well. And that's my preference, Shadow Rounds. Now, before I talk about the two different skills, let's have a quick overview of the Soul Slinger. According to the game codex, the Soul Slinger can attack at range and has skills that help her sisters. Remember this, nothing counts as much as blood. May each bullet be sanctified with the blood of your enemies. And if you can, aim between the eyes. The mother. So, the Soul Slinger is a ranged character and the only ranged unit that you can select. The Blade Master and the Shield Bearer to some degree has teleporting attacks, which can sort of attack from range, but they are still essentially melee units. In the beginning of the game, the Gunslinger may seem a little weak. However, later in the game, she can become very strong and also able to output very high damage. Additionally, the Gunslinger can unlock different skills that boost her sisters up the timeline, which can be very useful. So in terms of stats, the Soul Slinger is somewhere in between the Blade Master and the Shield Bearer. She, does, she is able to have a lot of dodge later on, but dodging is one of those things. Um, it's, sometimes, it's not something that you can rely on completely. She doesn't have teleporting abilities like the Blade Master, and she doesn't have armor skills like the Shield Bearer. So to some degree, she's actually a very squishy character. So you should use her from range and protect her as well with your Shield Bearer. So remember, Shield Bearer at the front to take damage and delay enemies. Blade Master to dish out high damage and the Soul Slinger for support. As I said, the Soul Slinger seems a bit weak, but she's actually very strong towards the end. But even in the beginning, you can still deal very high damage with um, her attacks. Now, at level one, she has two different attacks, the regular shot and interception rounds. Both are different. Interception rounds is the only skill you get at the level one that can cancel enemy attacks. But let's look at the basic shot. The basic shot has a range of six and deals up to 85 damage three times. So it's low damage three times, but the damage can quickly stack up. You can use this like a basic attack to hit enemies at range. Um, the damage doesn't really change if you're further away as compared to if you're really close. So at a range, at melee range, it does the same damage as at a range of six. It's a very useful attack, but it can be quite weak. What memories should you put on it? Well, anything that increases the damage of the attack, but you want to increase by a numerical amount, not by um, like a percentage, because the percentage doesn't increase uh, the damage by a lot. Now, intercepting round. Intercepting round is a skill that intercepts the first attack on an ally with a range of 10 and deals up to 268 damage two times. It says here 268 damage um, before the shot does 85 damage. This damage will increase as you level up. So this isn't the final damage that they do, you know. They will get more damage as they level up. Intercepting round is very useful because it can interrupt and cancel enemy attacks. As long as the enemy is within the 10 tile 
of um, Tantar range. In addition, various different attacks can be canceled. Actually, mo many types of attacks can be canceled. So, including boss attacks, area of effect attacks, but it does cost 10% HP, so you can't use it continuously. There is a limit to it. Otherwise, if you keep spamming it, your character could end up having no HP left, you know? You obviously cannot use this skill if you have less than 10% HP as well. I think it's a very powerful skill uh, because it cancels enemy attacks and it also can cancel boss attacks as I said, making it even more powerful as a skill. The only drawback is the HP reduction. So this is just a quick overview of the Soul Slinger. You can see that in the beginning of the game, she has the ability to deal modest amount of damage from long range. She also has a skill which can intercept enemy attacks. Okay, now let's look at the details of the two skills the Soul Slinger will unlock at level 2. The first skill we will talk about is Shadow Round. This is a reactionary skill which deals up to 235 damage to enemy taking damage from an ally. This skill has a range of 7. It also costs 5% of maximum HP. So, in order for this ability to work, enemies must be taking damage from an ally, and they must also be in range. There are a few important things to note about Shadow Round. First, it has a range of 7, so it can shoot a bit further than the normal attack of the Soul Slinger, which only has a range of 6. Secondly, it costs 5% HP, so you need to use it a little bit carefully. If you continue to spam it all the time, you end up losing a lot of HP and your character will get low on health. Obviously, you can't use this skill if your HP is below 5%. Now, it's a reactionary skill, so it can still be intercepted by an attack interception. Interception rounds is an interrupting skill, so it cannot be intercepted by another interception. However, Shadow Rounds, it's a reactionary skill, it can be intercepted by, for example, a ranged uh, interruption. It can also be interrupted by certain enemies special interruption ability, such as um, Corrupted Savior from Hope Breakers. Just remember that. It's not like Interception Round. Another thing to note about Shadow Rounds is it synergizes really well with AoE um, abilities or area of effect attacks. It works really well because any enemy that takes attack from an ally, if it's an AoE ability, it can attack and damage multiple targets. So for example, an area effect attack from the Deadly Dance by the Scythe Dancer potentially can hit multiple targets. Each target that gets hit or gets damaged will then activate Shadow Rounds, which will continue to damage those targets. And because AoE abilities can hit multiple targets, and sometimes multiple times, Shadow Rounds will also hit those targets multiple times, provided they're in range. So it synergizes really well with Protective Force, Detonating Shot, and Wrathful Rain. And obviously, the AoE attack has to come from an ally, not self. Another really interesting thing to note is that Shadow Round can stack together. So how does that work exactly? Well, here's an example. If you have multiple Soul Slingers or Gunslingers on the same team, let's say Gunslinger A, B, and C. Assuming they all activate Shadow Round, Gunslinger A then attacks an enemy, which will trigger Shadow Round from Gunslinger B, which in turn triggers Shadow Round from Gunslinger A, which then triggers Shadow Round from Gunslinger C. So this damage can stack up on top of each other, and this way you can perform combo attacks that can deal very high damage very quickly. You can also combine this with many other skills to create even more combos. Pretty much any form of damage coming from an ally will work. It could even be other reactionary skills, such as 
immovable stance, which hits the enemy and then activates shadow round. It could be menacing stance. It doesn't really matter exactly what type of attacks are coming from the ally. Even if the attack misses, it can still activate shadow round. Even if the attack does zero damage, because enemies have too much armor, shadow round will still work. This makes it a very powerful and versatile skill because it can be adapted to any situation. But because this skill costs HP, it cannot be used all the time. So, which situation should you prioritize using Shadow Round? When is the best time to activate this skill? Well, when you are surrounded by a lot of enemies, or when you are attacking an enemy with a lot of HP, such as bosses, because the damage can stack together. It is also effective against the Lost Soul in the Ritual missions, again because of high damage combos which you can perform. Although the Lost Soul has a lot of HP, if you hit it many times with multiple attacks, it can go down very quickly. If you are surrounded by many enemies, you can consider combining Shadow Round with AoE abilities to hit multiple enemies many times. As I said before, you can easily accumulate this damage. Now, there is something I'm going to spoil here about the final boss battle. So if you don't want to hear the spoiler, please skip ahead, about one minute of the video. The timestamp is in the description. I'll give you guys a few seconds to think about this, whether you want to hear the spoiler. Okay, here is a spoiler for the final boss. Shadow Round is a very effective skill to use for the final boss battle because of a few different reasons. The first reason is because the boss has a melee interruption ability and he is able to interrupt melee attacks. So it is better to use ranged attacks against him. And a ranged attack that can deal high damage is Shadow Rounds because it can stack together and output very high damage very quickly. Secondly, the boss can teleport around the map, so it is difficult for melee characters to engage him because you have to sort of chase him around the map. But range attacks, especially with shadow rounds, can hit from seven tiles away, so it is a more effective and more efficient method to deal damage to the final boss. So that is the spoiler. Another aspect of shadow rounds is that Enemies are unable to dodge this particular attack. I never miss with it and the damage appears to be guaranteed. However, there are certain enemies that have special interruption abilities and they can intercept damage from shadow rounds. A good example is a third boss. She has a special skill that can interrupt ranged attacks. So be careful when using shadow rounds against her. So, what type of memories should you put on the skill Shadow Round? In the early game, I prefer to increase the damage of the skill, either by a numerical amount like 55, or increasing by a percentage value or 20 or 30%. Towards the late game, so the 4th and the 5th week, you can consider using initiative push or initiative delay memories, such as um, the target acts 15 initiative units later, these memories are very useful because you cannot, not only you damage them, you also push them back the timeline. Uh, this can be particularly useful against enemies that act very quick up the timeline. However, for me, I still prefer increasing damage or reducing enemy armor, even in the late game. This is because I prefer to prioritize the initiative delay memories for AOE abilities, such as detonating shot or even just the regular shot because Shadow Rounds cost HP, so sometimes you will not end up using it. But that's up to you, and it will really depend on how many memories uh, you have and what kind of memories are available for you. It can change between different games and di obviously different recollections as well. So that's just my opinion on the memories to equip. Increasing the damage of a skill or reducing armor, you can't really go wrong with it, particularly increasing damage. It's always going to be helpful. 
The second skill I want to talk about here is Wrathful Rain. Wrathful Rain is an area of effect attack that deals up to 335 AoE damage, then move to an empty tile. So it is an AoE attack at melee range, but it allows you to relocate your Gunslinger once she completes her attack. The skill costs 35 AP, so you can use it as many times as you like per mission because it doesn't cost HP. However, you can only use it once per turn. So if you want to use the skill again, you have to wait until your next turn. So it is a good idea to avoid going to burst if you can, because going to burst mode pushes your character all the way down the timeline. And basically you get to use this skill less often per mission. But obviously that would depend on the situation. Because it is an AOE attack, it synergizes really well with shadow rounds. When you have two soul slingers, one activates shadow rounds, the other one uses wrathful rain to damage multiple targets. These targets being hit by wrathful rain will also activate shadow rounds, potentially stack up the damage, and you can defeat a group of strong enemies very quickly by combining these two skills together. However, because shadow rounds cost HP, you can't use this combo all the time. So you need to pick and choose and prioritize the situation to the use these two skills together. Now, the relocation ability of Wrathful Rain is quite interesting because it allows you to relocate your character even if your daughter is immobilized. There are these annoying enemies later on, they are called Maggot. They have an AOE um, immobilizing ability. Now there's weaker versions of them called Larvae that only can immobilize one target. But the stronger version of the Maggot, they can immobilize multiple daughters in an area. So they're very dangerous and if they immobilize your Soul Slinger, they, she cannot move. So she's stuck in a position and she's susceptible to attacks by other enemy. She's also susceptible to attacks by the Maggot, which uses a delayed attack called Grasping Mandible. However, in this particular situation, you can use Wrathful Rain to relocate yourself. You can do this to escape the attack from the Maggot when you're immobilized, or you can use it to move around to a better position. In survival and rescue missions, being immobilized is very dangerous because you need to move to an evac zone quickly. Otherwise, you could potentially be surrounded by enemies. Using the relocation ability of Wrathful Rain, you can push yourself closer to the evac zone, even if you cannot move normally. So it is very useful in situations where you are immobilized. And it is one of the few skills that the Soul Slinger has that allows you to relocate your character, even if she is immobilized. Despite these unique features of Wrathful Rain, I still prefer Shadow Rounds because I find it more useful in many different situations. It is effective against bosses, it is effective when you're surrounded by enemies, it is also effective against the Lost Soul in Ritual Missions because the damage can stack up very quickly with Shadow Rounds. However, as I have said before, Wrathful Rain synergizes well with Shadow Rounds and they work well together. So it doesn't hurt to have different soul slingers with different skills that can help each other. What about the different memories that you can equip on Wrathful Rain? What should you use? In the early game, I prefer to increase the damage of this skill. You can increase by numerical amount, for example, increase the damage of a skill by 55, or you can increase the damage of the skill by percentage value. As you level up, the damage of Wrathful Rain increases, and it can become quite a strong skill. It can defeat smaller enemies in one hit. So towards the mid game, you might consider using a percentage increasing in damage because it will be better. For example, increase the damage of a skill by 20 or 30%. Towards the end of the game or in the late game, I would prefer immobilizing target or initiative delay memories. If you're using target immobilizing memories, then you can potentially immobilize multiple targets. So enemies are unable to chase after the Soul Slinger once she repositions using Wrathful Rain. Obviously, there are some enemies which can bypass being immobilized, such as Hopebreakers, which can use Sidestep, and Reapers, which has Leap. 
So just be aware when you're facing these enemies. Initiative delay memories are also very useful because you can push multiple targets further down the timeline. This will allow you to take turns first, so you can attack and move before the enemy does. A good example of a memory to use will be Return, where the target acts 15 initiative units later. Say, if you hit three targets, you can then delay each of them for 15 initiative units. Because Wrathful Rain doesn't cost HP, you can then use it every turn to simply delay enemies down the timeline. These are just the memories I prefer to use on Wrathful Rain, but you can pick whichever you like. Remember, if you cannot decide which memories to use, you can always just increase the damage of this skill. Finally, I want to talk about what happens when you sacrifice the Soul Slinger for another daughter. In this particular game, at higher difficulty, the only way to heal another daughter is to sacrifice a daughter of equivalent or higher level. So if you sacrifice the Soul Slinger for another daughter, she will end up getting some bonuses, increasing in dodge percentage and increasing in critical chance. The increase in critical chance is always useful because it increases your chance of dealing a critical attack therefore increasing your overall damage output. Dodge increase, it's kinda useful. Dodge is not a really reliable um, technique in this particular game, it's just by luck. In addition to that, there are many attacks that cannot really be dodged, many AoE attacks and boss attacks that guarantees hit and you can't dodge them. So no matter how high your dodge percentage is, at least I've never dodged these attacks. So that's just something to note before I finish the video. I hope the video has been informative. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.